This is the second time I'm trying this. Because the first time, I don't think I made it public, so I had to start over again. So today I'm going to be talking about sort of like paleo versus keto or low carb versus keto for weight loss. Let's go right on to it. My very unfavorite topic. What's going on, Candace? I'm gonna lower this. Let's see here. All right, you guys are all in the house. Let's get this started and talk about the difference between the two. So I always try to avoid this subject of weight loss, but I think sometimes I need to bring it up because you guys are thirsty. Just thirsty. What's up, Deb? Deborah's in the house, so I feel very safe. My streams have completely changed since Deborah has come in strong as my moderator. Like, yeah, don't forget to like up the stream, guys, as we get started. So let's hit this subject, right? And then I'll take your questions and then I'm gonna bounce. So essentially, and this is a little bit crooked. What's going on here? Uh, essentially, uh, keto is, I just had a podcast interview with the um, uh, Women's Health Summit. But with that said, said, one of the questions they were asking about was um, sort of what would be considered low carb and what would be considered keto and why. And I thought that would be a great topic for today. So, and especially in terms of weight loss. Now, I always are, am going to choose keto over low carb and I'll explain why and for everything, not just for weight loss, but for autoimmunity, tired, skin issues, gut issues, reproductive hormonal issues, itis, colitis, all kind of itises. So the reason why I choose keto clearly is because you're going to stabilize your blood sugar and it's going to be lower, which means that your blood sugar will not do this anymore. It'll do this, which is more of a homeostatic balance. So the problem with you guys is you tend to have issues with your blood sugar and it creates a host of problems that you're not aware of or you're not connecting it due to uh, unstable blood sugar like crashing, tired, sleeping horrifically, skin issues, cravings, whatever. So low carb is not ketotic. So you can produce ketones on a low carb diet or a paleo diet, but you're not gonna produce enough viable ketones to be ketotic. So that's the simple short of it. You're not going to be using viable ketones to be here on a low carb diet. And so on a low carb diet, you've gotta really, 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 really watch um, and I can't see the comments because I'm standing very far away from my phone. So a low carb diet, you're gonna to have to keep eating every three, four hours, period. And you wanna restore glycogen on a low carb diet, but low carb means uh, very low in the um, variation of starches and no sugars. So a low carb diet, you can still eat your fruits, your sweet fruits, and uh, you can still have things like white rice. Uh, and you can, you can have your yellow squashes and carrots and berries and all this stuff, sweet potato, but you would not be having bread. <laughs> you still would not be having nuts. And you stood, still would not be having, uh, what else? Just sugars, sugary things. And you would try to balance your blood sugar by doing a low carb version. So low carb, you have to eat every couple of hours because you're, energy for a person who's dependent on carbohydrates, low carb, paleo, is in your muscle, right? So that's your gas tank. And when that's depleted, you start to have it, you start to have huge blood sugar swings and then that creates all the autoimmunity. Well, that's a huge contribution to your autoimmunity is a blood sugar dysregulation and your energy crisis and your thyroid crisis. So with keto, with a lot of hard work and a lot of understanding of your previous and current health, you can stabilize blood sugar more, be less having to eat every couple of hours to refill glycogen, which is the gas tank in the car, because you have the gas tank here, right? That's keto. You've got body fat, and of course, women's zone is here. This is the female zone. This 
slave is bothering me. This is the female zone. And for men, this is the male zone, right? That's the male zone right there. And uh, when you're ketotic, you can access that those body fat parts more to drop body fat because you really don't want to drop weight. So if you guys are asking questions, I can't see any questions. Don't forget to like up the stream. So uh, I did a bunch of pre pre-recorded videos, but I thought I would do live stream anyway today. And remind you guys that I do a keto course and also I'm incorporating low carb as well because a lot of people have a hard time with the ketogenic protocol because of the, I don't like to use the word strict or limited because I don't feel strict that it's strict or limited, but some people have a difficulty getting their sleep in order, getting their blood sugar in order, and so they have to do sort of a graduation process to keto, so it would be a low carb version. So I'm gonna add more things like that to my site. I'm going to be creating uh, low carb meal plan options, either to graduate or just to stay on to, because there are some people who've done keto for a year and they don't adapt. And you have, if you don't get your stress down, you can't keto adapt. It's just impossible. It's impossible. So when people are like, oh, just like lower your fat and I mean, up your fat and you know, whatever protein and like drop your carbs and have some nuts and cheese, you're gonna be adapted and people are not. And people see uh, weight loss on the scale from other people, right? Oh, my uncle or my neighbor or my friend at work is doing this and they lost a bunch of weight, but nobody knows what they lost. Did they lose muscle? Did they lose bone marrow? Did they lose their reproductive organ or hormone stability? Did they lose a lot of water? That's what a lot of people don't know. And so I like for people to go get DEXA stands, stands, scans, or dunked under uh, water to, um, to see actually what their lean mass truly is, their muscle compared to their fat ratio and water. But with that said, so if you're going to be doing a low carb protocol, it's because you don't got the cojones for the ketogenic protocol. And I realize that it's a very, very tight, small range, tight, small range of people who actually adapt and get the business. Because you guys know I'm 51 and I've been doing this for 11 years and my health just keeps getting better and I keep just getting younger on keto. If you don't believe me, look at my video catalog, which is the fact that I have. But I've learned a lot to y'all in this, this evolution to um, in coaching people, as corny as the word coaching is, or consulting. Uh, I've learned so much, so I'm able to tweak the knobs and the dials on the machine, because that's my machine. And I've been able to do like fix things to keep my body more in balance, just for the lack, or not, or for the strength of having more knowledge. I mean, right now you guys know I'm talking a lot about organ meats, about deficiencies. So you guys tend to be copper, zinc, D, magnesium, potassium, calcium deficient, selenium deficient, B12 deficient, CoQ10 deficient. Guys are really deficient in a lot of things. And so when you start to, um, <laughs> Yes, honey. Yes, 51. Um, and I've been doing keto for 11 straight years without a drop of caffeine, alcohol, nuts. I mean, I've done macadamia nuts, but not the almonds, pistachios, no rice, no beans, no sweet potato, no nothing. So uh, that means I have no sweet fruits. I have not introduced those foods back into my diet whatsoever, not one time. So with that said, y'all, um, a lot of people that I say, hey, maybe it's time to throw in the towel with keto are the people who just can't sleep. And I have this keto course page uh, and you can sign up for my keto course. It's $15 a month. You can do one month or many months. It's very cheap. And of course, you guys, I do consultations and I've been doing them for eight, nine, 10 out of the 11 years. I've been doing it a long time. So I've been coaching thousands of people. So at least I'm an autodidact. 
and through osmosis, you're going to learn something when you start to compare, when you are a scientist in the, in the field, and you start to see the comparisons between people because we are very different, but we are very similar. And the modern society and the exposure to medication and antibiotics and uh, you know, something as simple as birth control pills or alcohol, these are all things that really show some of the same reactions in, in many of us, especially if you're not breastfed or if you were not vaginally birthed or you were fed soy, formula, inoculations. So you can kind of see that we're different and we have different tolerances, but dang, y'all are very similar in your issues. So uh, if people cannot stabilize their blood sugar, that is the only reason to go off keto and stay to a low carb. It's not because you have thyroid, like just strictly because of thyroid, thyroid or, or um, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis. Uh, lupus, cancer, heart disease, Lyme's, PCOS, but that's hormonal, endometriosis, fibroids. It's not the reason to, oh, to subscribe to my Facebook Keto Course. Go to Stephanie Person. Oh, she's saying it's $15 a month for a subscri subscription. And you go to stephanieperson.com. And also, you guys can get a lot of information on my Instagram, which is Stephanie Ketogenic. And my Facebook, which is Stephanie the Business, as in the business person. But with that said, uh, hi Noel and everybody here. Uh, for coaching, you just go to stephanieperson.com and I do one-on-one -on -one consultations. And at this juncture, it sounds so cliche, but I'm good. I'm really good. So you guys are really looking to be ketotic, I'm your girl. And if y'all are looking to remain low carb, high fat, but don't want to have, don't want to develop underlying hypoglycemia, thyroid, or reproductive hormonal issues, I'm your girl. And when it comes to weight loss, that comes after you fix your shite. Then the fat loss, not weight loss, will happen. Yes, to book a consultation with Stephanie, go to her website, stephanieperson.com. Thank you, Deborah. So Deborah is my moderator, and she's just always helping me out. So thank you so much. Don't forget to like up the stream, guys. We've got 85 people in the house and 37 likes only. And as you guys know, I'm trying to get more people to this very humble channel. So a low-carb, high-fat diet is going to look like this. And I've said this before, but this is how it's going to look like. Uh, it is... Um, I see so many chats come in. Oh, so D... What is it? DS says, did a consultation when I first started highly recommended thank you so much and i don't even know who that person is because i just see d something so thank you so so much um as far as the profile goes on youtube is this blurry focus you stupid phone it starts getting blurry when the sun goes down so i'm gonna try to hurry up uh so i want to get off the stream when the sun goes down so when you're doing a low carb high fat protocol uh you really want to make sure that you get enough carbs in every three to four hours maximum. So this whole intermittent fasting thing, it doesn't work when you are carb dependent and have jobs and children and issues and health issues and blood sugar issues. So wipe out the intermittent fasting, yes. So once you're ketotic, there is a way to fast, but the fasting schedule is different than the standard intermittent fasting schedule which I can help you guys with but first you want to produce in the viable ketones but I'll go into the ketogenic diet version of it because that's the dang point right so low carb high fat would be I don't like uh, grains and the only grain that I really sort of suggest is white rice because all of the poisons have been bleached out so there's a reason reason why a lot of Asian communities eat white rice because the whole the shell of the rice has typically has arsenic and the meat of it has a lot of phytic acid which is fracking y'all up so you bleach it and you just use it as energy and not for nutrients when you bleach when you have bleached white rice so people who've got histamine intolerance issues with plant source foods do a lot better 
with white rice. You know, if you have a dog that's sick, what do you do? You feed it white rice. You have a stomach ache, you eat white rice. So, um, but that's what people do. That's not what I do. I do keto. So with that said, uh, you could have one fourth to one third cup or two ounces of white rice or sweet potato per meal. Now, if you did carrots and yellow squash, you wouldn't, you could eat like a lunch with carrots, yellow squash, and again, be careful with everything that has seeds, like tomatoes, squash, zucchini, because anything with seeds has even more anti-nutrients in it. Um, a lot of you all are just doing the cruciferous vegetables and thinking that you're ketotic, but your fats are too low, but I'll go into that. So you would eat a portion, like a meatball size of carbs every couple of hours, at least in your main meals, at least one fourth to one third cup. Now in between your meals, you can also add fruit, like, I so cannot stand fruit. I'm sorry, people because of all the fructose issues and the people having sensitivities to things, the lectins, but you can have um, berries, you can have, I hate banana, I'm not gonna say banana. You can have berries, <laughs> green apples, carrots, squash in between meals, but your starches like sweet potato and white rice should be in your main meals and the other higher but lower in carbohydrate foods, plant source foods should be in between. So you're eating every couple of hours. So for example, if you don't have an aversion to coconut cream, you could do coconut cream with berries in between your meals or a couple of carrots or baby carrots in between your meals, but your main meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner should have a starch. Now, with that said, what you wanna do with your fat, especially if you're gonna have rice, because it's gonna be high in starch, is you wanna really get that two, three tablespoons of fat, like in a fatty tea in between your meals. So you could have like a fatty tea with carrots, but you shouldn't have a fatty tea with rice because rice is gonna raise that glycemic index. It's gonna spike your insulin and then the insulin's gonna store everything in the blood, including the fat. So I'll go more into that in another separate video, pre-recorded video. And this is how you keep restoring glycogen. So your carbs really should be under 100 for the entire day. Now you can manage 80 carbohydrates, grams of carbohydrates a day on a low carb diet, high in fat. So you really want your fats to still be between 120 and 200 grams of fat a day, but you really wanna get the bulk of your fats like in bone broth or teeth or straight in the mouth in between meals away from the high starch. Now you can manage a couple of tablespoons of fat with sweet potato and you can manage a tablespoon, which is 15 grams in weight, of fat with white, white, white rice. But the other, when you're adding, the, like if you're going to 10 tablespoons of butter per day on a low carb high fat, split it, get the fat in between the meals. Now, keto is straight up fat all day, every day because we're not, we're, we're not doing any starch then we wanna load our main meals with three, four, five tablespoons of animal fat on the plate, okay? I don't count the cooking process anymore because a lot of y'all are cheating yourself and having like coconut oil in the frying pan and thinking you're ketotic, your ketones are in the garbage can. So to be ketotic, you have to eat enough fat to get the brain to understand that with a low carbohydrate count, right? If you're having under 20 net carbs. Now, I am Mike Munzel at High Intensity Health, Intensity Health was saying that over time, your carbohydrate tolerance is uh, better as the longer you do keto, that is true. But I don't have a need to go higher than 20. I don't need to push my carbs up to 30, even though my tolerance is higher than most. And that is mainly because I lift, right? Because I have glute 4 receptors on my muscle that will uptake that glucose and use it. But I don't even ride that wave of getting my carbohydrates too high. I just keep them real low. And I have about, I have less than 20 total carbs per day. It used to be net. Now I'm down because I'm riding that carnivore edge. And the carnivore diet must be, must be a keto carnivore 
or it's going to frack you up. Now I'm going to take you guys' questions because being ketotic is having high fat, no rice, no sweet potato, no sweet fruits, no zucchini, none of that stuff, and doing fatty meats and a lot of fat, especially animal fat, animal fat, and at least 12 tablespoons, which will get you up to about 167 grams of fat. And you can spread that out throughout the day, like three or four in the main meals and two or three in between meals. And uh, you don't want to eat late at night because the body doesn't digest food very well and it just sits in your stomach. You wake up not hungry, you're drinking the coffee. Stay away from allergenic foods, stay away from cheese, stay away from nuts and caffeine, trying to do keto and don't intermittent fast. And don't listen to the garbage you hear on the internet because it's all lies and hype. And if anything seems too easy, it's a lie. All right, I just spilled some water on a live stream. I apologize for the Wi-Fi, but y'all, I've changed my Wi-Fi twice and the quality is just sub, middle to far. Okay, no cheese, yeah, it's uh, inflammatory. Inversion table where a person hangs upside down. Sure, that's great, yeah, yeah, especially if you guys have freaking swollen, it's like all the fluids in your legs and people have got lymphatic issues, they've got um, potassium, sodium issues where they swell, especially women tend to swell. That's a really great way to get some blood flow and fluid out of the legs and up in the brain. So keto carnivore, what is it? Narita, okay. So keto carnivore is you cut out all the plants. So you're not gonna do like, people are like, oh, carnivore, but I have some romaine lettuce salad. I'm like, that's not carnivore. Carnivore is to get rid of all plants, all of them. So that puts you at risk, right, for some deficiencies like potassium. So potassium is very high in avocados and in spinach and I think potatoes or something like that. But in uh, meats, not so much. So you really wanna go for the marrow. You wanna go for the organ meats, especially liver, that have higher levels of potassium. Now I like potassium chloride because it's pretty toxic. So I don't like that no salt or cream tartar, tar, 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 tar. Nope. Um, and there's small amounts of potassium in salt, clearly, because it's a mineral. Now, uh, also carnivore is keto carnivore, which carnivore diet is keto, people. Like, you have to have fatty cuts. If you're having too much of the muscle meat, you can actually, just eating muscle meat, you can actually start to create issues with your kidneys, right? When you smell people at the gym, they smell like metal or like nastiness. This ammonia, that's the kidneys overworking. And uh, um, you really want fattier cuts of meat to actually create ketones that you can use first dietary, then body fat. And if you're doing meats and you're getting just like a steak and it's not super marble and you're not adding fat like tallow or lard or butter to the plate, you could be creating hypoglycemia, thyroid issues, uh, and start to mismanage your blood sugar and also your reproductive hormones. And if people do carnivore long enough with not getting enough fat in, they're gonna start to see issues. At, or, no, organ meats. You must do the organ meats so you can get, and, and the marrow and the organ meats, and if you want to get your calcium, you can get it from like fish bones, like meal down, dried out fish bones, eggshells, this is your form of calcium. Make sure you get some sun. If you don't have sun where you are, get a vitamin D lamp and eat really high D rich foods on a carnivore diet because you don't want to become nutrient deficient. Not that plants are high in, in um, uh, your micronutrients, but they are cleansing and they have some properties like the potassium that is missing in high amounts of potassium that is missing when eating just straight meat with no vegetables, no fruits, zero. That's keto carnivore. So you still wanna have your fat around two to 300 grams of fat. Get fat on fat? No, you don't get fat on fat. What makes you fat is carbs because of insulin. So I've been doing keto for 11 years. You guys can go back to older ridiculousness, ugly videos and I energy and see that I'm in a half top years later, still lean on freaking a block of butter, a whole package of butter every single day. 
which is 227 grams of fat, and that's not even including all the other fats. Now, I'm not doing carnivore, so I'll have, I'll have avocado, I'll have spinach, but I have taken down the amount of plant sourced foods down to a minimum because of learning so much about the autoimmunity, learning so much about the anti-nutrients in plants. People are eating plants out of season and all our, our plants have been genetic, genetically altered, hybridized, selectively bred, and straight up genetically modified. So I don't wanna be a part of that anymore. It gives me a freaking headache thinking about it. So I have lowered my plant source foods exponentially. Yes, yeah, so you're gonna get vitamin D and K2, especially K2 is so important. So you don't have like calcification of your arteries. Men, you don't have the calcification of your hair follicles because a lot of y'all are going bald because of too much calcium in the follicle. So that's something I spoke about on Instagram. So my Instagram is Stephanie Ketogenic. And yeah, we need a balance of things, right? Sodium, potassium. We've got selenium, iodine, and then we've got vitamin D, calcium, and also K2, which are so important on these seemingly extreme diets, but they're not. They're freaking amazing. And it's not even a diet, y'all. It's a lifestyle because if you don't get your sleep in order and on any diet, then your blood sugar's uh, destabilized. And then what happens? You start to be tired. You start to go into gluconeogenesis. Your hormones start to frack up. You start to have adrenal insufficiencies and thyroid insufficiencies. And you start to develop weird things like tinnitus and, and rhinoids and, and uh, vertigo and all this weird stuff from being deficient. It's, it's, I'm serious. We're seeding gum line. Uh, you guys have like skin issues, white tongue. Now many consultations I've done with people who've got candida because they've got no, their immune system is so weakened because of a, a, a dysbiosis of the gut and people are malabsorptive. They're not absorbing their nutrients because they've got holes in the gut wall. So that's why I like keto. Keto helps seal and fix all of it when done correctly. A low carb diet is manageable, but if you aren't on point fully correct with the timing of your glycogen storage or restorage, uh, you, 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 you have, you fracked up, you fracked up. So, okay. Um, we got 93 people in the house. Let's see if we can get the likes up. We got, uh, 59 likes and you guys, I can't see who's liking the stream. So don't be scared. Don't be scared. What you need to do is collapse the, the X in the corner and you'll see a thumbs up. You click on it. And then on the bottom, there are icons. And one of the icons says chat. You click on that and it reopens up the, uh, the chat where I'm talking. So that's how you like up the stream for a lot of you people who don't know how to like up the stream. And it helps bring people to this channel. So I'm going to take your guys' questions. And I'm learning now. I'm not live streaming as much. I'm going to start doing pre-recorded videos by request that you guys want me to do more pre-recorded videos. But as you can see, anybody who came on this video, I haven't really answered any questions yet. So do not complain that I'm all over the place because I'm not. I was very clear on this, what, 28 minute explanation of low carb versus keto. Let me see incredible wealth of information. Thank you so much. Let me see here. Was put on antibiotics for over a month what is the best diet for me to keto? But it has to be done correctly. If you don't do it correctly uh, and you have, your body does a rebound and does this physiological insulin resistance rebound, then your blood sugar can spike. So if your blood sugar is gonna spike and you're inflamed and your sleep is bad, the candida is gonna grow, even on a low carb. But I mean, even on a ketogenic protocol, but keto is really great to starve those candida albicans spores. It's amazing, amazing for, for candida. I had candida, uh, candida for a long time. Deborah's not playing. Y'all, trolls, it's just, it's no point. Cause when Deborah's here, like you can't get a comment and it's deleted immediately. Let me see, like you're the best. Oh, thank you, Camilla. See, like up the stream, people. The woman is awesome. Thanks for all to, to step. Thank you, Nicole. Does Tylenol kick you out of contest? So Tylenol is really toxic to the liver. And the thing is, you guys, a lot of you guys have, you have underlying, and you don't realize it, you have too much estrogen in the liver. A lot of you women are estrogen dominant, and the kidneys are overworking, and then you take Tylenol. You don't, we don't need things like this anymore. That's why herbs are really great 
for cleansing and healing certain things. There are certain things that you can take instead of Tylenol, like omega-3s, like I think it's called uh, white bark, I think, is another way, as an anti-inflammatory. One of your thoughts. Uh, let me see. Okay. Sleep is key. Yes, it is key. We'll never adapt with, uh, without getting it in, in check. So 100% you guys, your body does all the magic while you sleep, loses weight, skin repairing, cell turnover, like everything's while you sleep. So if you're not sleeping well, I don't care if you go to bed at 12 and wake up at 8, you didn't sleep well because you're not following a circadian rhythm. And none of these things will matter if you don't sleep well. It doesn't matter if you're on a low carb, high fat paleo or if you're on keto, your body can't repair. So that's why people, it's very rare, like okay I'm 51. And I, I used to be a pro skater, and I've had 10 surgeries on my left knee. A lot of you guys know this. I can't run, I can't jump, I can't squat, but I still was able to build my legs because I need substrate, right? I need to be insulin sensitive. I need to eat organ meats. I need to get everything in. I need to get the CoQ10. I need to get the vitamin D. I need to get my minerals in so my body, my cells can, can uh, repair themselves. So I don't have so much cellular death. And we have less cellular death. You age less. That means that your telomeres and your DNA stays more intact by getting enough nutrition and the right nutrients to fix cells and people keep forgetting that. You can't just take supplements, that's not gonna fix things. Mm, Mark, you don't need Tylenol. I mean, I had 10 knee surgeries on zero painkillers. You don't need Tylenol, I'm telling y'all. Let me see, what's the best? Uh, there is no good calculator. And they're all off. So it's better to get a calculator that where you just scan or you read the package and you enter it and chart it and track it yourself. But all of these, these calculators are off and people are dependent on them. And when I first started uh, coaching or consulting people, they were having like heart attacks because like the macronutrient profile was so off. I was like, honey, you're not eating that much protein. You're not eating that much fat. It's off. It's the same thing with a glucometer. You have to take it with a grain of salt. So I prefer for people to, if they use a glucometer, to also chart their symptoms so you get more of an ob objective overview. The circadian rhythm cycle, oh, that's easy. I mean, you are, you are getting to bed by 9, 30-ish, 10 max. You're waking up when the sun comes up. You're calming down when the sun goes down. And your nutrition is based around the circadian rhythm. Right, the early part of the morning is very cortisol driven, so you're gonna eat food, you're gonna get the systems going, right? And then when the sun goes down, serotonin is supposed to, uh, sorry, melatonin, just a precursor to serotonin, is supposed to spike as the melatonin goes down and relax you. So you guys can start to get into this nice hibernation vibe at night, which a lot of you guys are like, I'm a night owl, like, I like to be on my computer, watch Netflix and do all this stuff at night, and it's, you guys aren't repairing. And if you guys want the business, right, you have to do stuff that goes against your habits. A lot of you guys are forming these habits. And sometimes talking to adults is like talking to children in these consultations. But do I have to go to bed? Do I have to eat this food? I don't like this food. I'm like, but you're not happy. You're not healthy. You're not thriving. You have issues. Thank you, Mark. Thank you so much for, it's weird, it's just two prices, $1.99 and a fiber. Thank you so much for donating to the Super Chat. I really appreciate it. You want the business. You guys can have your own business. Like, I love to work out. Like, that's my thing. I love to work out, and a lot of people, they don't love it. And it's not that they don't, see, exercising is moving, right? That's exercise. And if you're not moving, you're sitting all the time. Like, I can't sit. Like, I'm like, pants, pants, need to dance. Like, I like to move because that's what the body's designed for. So I've kept that same type of, I get hyped when I move my body as the same as when I was 17, 15, 12, 51, it doesn't matter. And so that means that my hormones, right, my muscular system is strong. I'm strong, I feel strong. And I love to work out. I, I'm, I freaking get high on it. And I don't mean overtraining, because I can't. I used to be a pro skater, so I've injured 
myself a lot, a lot, broken a lot of stuff all over the body. I have to be very careful now, but as you can see, youth and vitality starts here. You guys don't realize that it starts here. If you're not enjoying your, your, your journey, I hate those words, your journey, it's not going to happen for you people. But this body is a reflection of this. It is. Because I love to move. I love to exercise. I love to play. Gym is my playground. I love to do keto. I don't find anything difficult. Nothing. Whatever I need to do, I am willing. And if you all are not willing, then you all have issues. I really, let me see. I really, on my macro calculator, you're saying it's not accurate. No, it's not. So get rid of it. Because this would be good. It, oh, I've done macro. I mean, I'm on Dr. Oz talking about two to three ounces and, you know, one hand. Like, because people, like, understand visuals. Like, this would be a cup of loose hand of vegetables measured raw. And two or three, four, five fingers worth of protein would give you that 14 to, to 25 grams of protein per meal, depending on how many fingers, which would equate ounces and grams. So... Somebody said, I'm so confused. I'm like, four fingers, four fingers is 100 grams in weight, which is four ounces. Five fingers is 125 grams in weight, right? That's five ounces. And then the protein, if a fatty protein is going to be between, and I mean, if you use your hands as a measurement, you're not going to go over protein. It's when we're sitting there, we're like, I'm so afraid of that fat. And you're just like, more protein and more protein. And you're just like stuffed on a protein meal, and then you have low energy because your body's converting what you can't use into glucose. Okay, does the Facebook keto group assist with eating portions and, yeah, I mean, it's a course. So every day I'm teaching you guys something. I do many consultations, and I have days where I'm having course lessons, I'm having group discussions, I'm having people, like, but today people were taking pictures of what, were, what was in the refrigerator, because everybody wants to know what everybody else is like, what's in your cabinet, what's in your refrigerator. I said, uh, it also put in what you need to get and what uh, you need to get rid of. So this was more of a fun day of discussing diff different foods. I have people on the carnivore diet. I've got people with thyroid dis issues, lymphatic issues. And we discuss like, I'll put a course lesson up. I'll say what the problem is. I'll say a solution. And then people start discussing, hey, I've got this problem too. This worked for me. This didn't work for me. That's how the course is run. Are you showing three fingers as in only fingers area? Yeah, three fingers. And this would be the thickness, like right about here of the thickness of your hand in portion, like the thickness of the meat. So literally it's about that much meat is about three ounces. Three fingers worth that thick. So if I have protein, right, if I have a chicken thigh, I could go like this, right, and go, it's about three fingers worth. Now everybody's fingers are different lengths, but it'll put you in the range without over counting stuff. How do you fix floating stool and constipation? So CP, I don't know, like you guys can't do like, bleh. So I don't know how long you've been constipated for. I don't know if you're male or female. I don't know if you're doing keto. I don't know if you've had gut issues in the past. I don't know if you're breastfed. I don't have, know if you have a candida overgrowth because these are the things that make your stool float. Um, I don't know if you drink alcohol for years or caffeine, soda, anything that's going to break down the mucus lining of your stomach and your intestine. Like, I don't know. Constipation can be from a bacterial imbalance, candida, it can be from um, uh, thyroid problems, uh, can be from all kind of stuff, like women who've got fibroids and the fibroid is, you know, is pressing on the colon and blocking and people start to have a paralyzed, the peristalsis system. I mean, there's so many reasons. So I don't know more details. And before my old videos and live streams, I would just try to answer. And now I'm like, I don't know more of the background. That's where one-on-one -on -one consultation would be advantageous. So then we can start doing the process of elimination. And I'm really, really good at figuring things out because I'm an autodidact and, uh, and it works. It works. Thanks, Deborah. Okay, uh, your opinion on lung cancer and keto. I think that, Christine, all cancer, it should be that people with cancer should really consider 
the ketogenic diet as an anti-cancer protocol because of stabilizing and lowering that glucose because cancer cells love to divide and grow in the presence of a lot of glucose. So it's an amazing um, way to, to develop and use ketones to, to stifle the ability to divide by lowering your glucose. So, you know, my whole journey started with my mom having a glioblastoma. It's the most aggressive brain cancer. They gave her zero chance of surviving. And she's still alive. So, I'm really about, if I had cancer and I wasn't on keto, I would have jumped on it like the second I heard that the two could help. But it has to be done the correct way. And if it's not done the correct way, if you go on their websites and you're seeing like cheese and it's from sick cows and nuts and phytic acid and hasn't been soaked and you keep doing, you keep drinking the coffee and you're intermittent fasting, you can actually make your immunity weaker and create uh, more of a platform for your uh, cancer to start taking over your body. You must have a, a strong immune system. So a lifestyle change is a part of this diet. Without the lifestyle change, keto means nothing. Oh, hello from Australia. I was there doing seminars. It's a year and a half ago now. How do I know if I, uh, how many carbs, protein, fat for weight loss? Um, Michelle, book a consultation. Uh, your body doesn't is not indicative of a number at all. You can't go and put in calculations. I eat this much protein, eat this fat, and then I lose weight. It won't happen that way. You need to know what your reproductive hormones are because if you're estrogen dominant, you're not going to lose weight very much. If you have uh, thyroid, if your T3 is low, you're not going to lose weight very much. If you don't sleep, you can become insulin resistant overnight. You're not going to lose weight very much. If you're riding that wave of insulin resistant, you're not going to lose weight. So it doesn't work like, oh, I just eat like this and then I lose weight. You have to fix these certain things and then you can start dropping body fat and only then. So that's when you come to me and I'm trying to introduce low carb, high fat as well as keto to people so they know just how to have optimal health. But of course I'm, I'm like ride or die keto. I'll be, always be keto, but I realize some people either don't feel that they can do it, not because genetically they can't do it, it's because they just don't stick to it. The ones who stick to it, they adapt and they reap the benefits. I know because I have a course page and I have consultations and, and I've coached people over years and years and years and I see the people who are adapting, who are thriving. And then I see the people who are like, I have developed hypoglycemia, my menstrual cycle stopped, I'm bleeding all the time, like my, I'm developing crepey skin and I'm eating cheese and then I'm more blunt. I... <clears throat> so uh, book a consultation, it is worth it. If there's one thing you're gonna do is invest in your health, so. Or the course page. I love calf liver. Yeah, the livers. It's yeah. People love calf. Actually, I don't care what liver it is. I don't care if it's calf or lamb or or beef or chicken. People like calf because it's not as bitter. But I actually, don't taste the bitterness when I eat beef liver. Fifteen pounds of stopped losing recently. I'll book. Yeah. Uh, do you suggest collagen? Um, be careful for the collagen. Be careful for the collagen. Um. Oh, Chris Masterjohn was talking about collagen um, blocking something, but I'll get back to that. Uh, I don't like collagen powder. I prefer real collagen from oxtail, chicken feet, pig feet, and, or the uh, knuckle ends of uh, beef bones and having it broken down and then sip on it. You want really thick, gelatinous collagen because there's not a lot of fat in a bone broth and make sure you don't have a glutamate sensitivity. All right, guys, we're 102 people. Can we get the, can we get the likes over 100 for this girl who's working her butt off? Um, so no, I don't suggest collagen powder. I suggest real collagen. Do you think, oh, he was talking about collagen eaten by itself and not with something else created some issues when people are just drinking powdered collagen and teas and I agree and it's not a good source of protein to build muscle so LA right <laughs> uh, uh, quick beef liver recipe um, I like to take my beef liver and let it marinate in melted butter for about an hour to two hours and then I throw it on the saucepan and I add salt pepper and a little bit of pepper because if it's a, it's a nightshade, 
a little bit of fresh ginger, a little bit of garlic, and I'm good. And some uh, green um, spring onions with the green part, saute it with the onion, delish, with all that butter. And I'll literally use like a quarter of a stick of butter as on, and it's just, just butter all over it, it's delish. You're awesome. Uh, thanks for all your help and time. Thank you, Michelle. I appreciate it. So I think this is it, guys. It's just so crazy that you see exactly what I was thinking when I bought it. Oh, cool. My eight-year-old daughter wants you to make more skating videos. Yes, I'm going to. I'm going to. Yeah. Especially in the springtime. So um, Mike Munzel at High Intensity Health Channel, he's going to interview me. He's supposed to be coming end of January, but you know how, how it works. I've had some interviews lately and like rescheduling. If he does come, I want to take him to a skate park to do my interview. He's always like sitting on a chair with some professional. I'm like, let's go to the skate park. Let's go to the gym. Let's do a handstand session. And then let's go to the skate park. And then let's sit with the skate park in the background and talk about health. That's what I want to do. Rosie's like, I'm going to try that beef. It's good. For those who are like freaked out by the liver, I prefer it to not be just grounded up minced and with minced meat. I like it in burgers because it really disguises the beef when you uh, do like, like a 40, 60 split, like 40% liver, 60% beef, mix it all together. You can even throw an egg in there and spice it and make a burger and you won't taste the beef. And then you'll get those like beef liver is the most nutrient dense food on the planet like you can't beat it with the zinc and the selenium and the, the, the fat soluble vitamins and the potassium and and the vitamin c and the b12 and the b complex it's freaking amazing and the copper and the vitamin a for your immune system you guys are having immune system issues from the lack of vitamin a in your diet Let's see what are the symptoms of keto adapted um a lot of weird stuff like like everything starts to change. Like if you're getting enough nutrients, you're getting biotin, you're getting like your omega threes, like you're getting collagen in this diet. So you like your skin, your hair, your nails, your eyes with vitamin A, eye clarity. Um, you don't crash anymore. Your blood sugar is very stable. Sleep becomes better. Your hormones adjust. Women who've got uh, progesterone on the floor, it begins to rise, and estrogen begins to balance the estradiol. It balances, and um, if you've got like rosacea and shingles and eczema and candida and arthritis and inflammation and you're bloated and you can't digest well and you're tired all the time and all those things become normalized. It's amazing if your cycle, you haven't had a cycle for a while, it can start re-jump your cycle and put it back to normal 28 day cycle for women. It can raise men's testosterone levels. It's really amazing. But you got to follow my protocol because I don't do any of these fake nastiness. I try to get whole foods in there. Now, sometimes, yes, I'm making recipes because people are food addicts, but I'm trying to say disclaimers, you know, this is for like a special occasion. Don't eat this faux carb daily. Focus on real whole foods. That's what, that's what's up. I was thinking about ordering liverwurst. Yeah, you could do liverwurst like uswellnessmeats.com. They have like a, they have, I think they have a mixture. You can either do like the liverwurst with straight liver or you could do like ki kidney. So a lot of you guys have diamond oxidase, which is an enzyme deficiency. That's why you have histamine intolerance. You need, you need substrate to be able to, to, um, to, to, to develop this enzyme to break down the histamine. So then that cocktail of a, of a worst with all those three, liver, kidney, and beef is perfect. Um, is it stainless steel water bottle better than plastic? Yeah, I mean, my water bottle bottle is stainless steel, but I'm not a water bottle expert. So, you know, can we just get people off the plastic BPA bottles? If that, if you're going to BPA, non-BPA, even though they're still a little bit, I think you can go to stainless steel. It's up to you. We're toxic no matter what. Just have good detoxification pathways. Powerful, independent woman. Yes, always powerful. And 51. And I want to talk more about, you know, everybody keeps... When I'm like at the gym and around millennials are like, look what she's wearing. She's too old for that. And I was like, I'm older than she is. Chill, chill. But people shouldn't be wearing that or doing that. Don't listen to people's opinions. Just do what you want to do. 
I live in a city of weirdos. And I'm like, but at least it's entertaining and they are themselves. So, boop. I want people to focus on health and not just pure aesthetics. Because I see so many people at the gym who do fitness competitions and because you see muscles, uh, you think they're so healthy, but you guys can see I am not um, paper thin lean at all. There's a lot of fat in the dermis layers of my skin, so I'm very, very, very healthy at a low body fat, but not lower. So you guys have seen me lower and it's just, no. I'll take this at 51, all day. If I look like that in my 50s at any age, I'd, I'd flaunt it. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not necessarily flaunting it, but there is a sense of pride. There's a sense of accomplishment. There's a sense of accomplishment. If I were 28 years old, it's not the same sense of accomplishment, right? You're like, I've been on this planet this long and I've survived through all this stuff. It's a sense of accomplishment. It's a sense of, yes, I work for this. Because at 50, people are like, oh, but it's all your genes. I'm like, no, honey. I'm not a young little girl anymore, plus I had a knee injury. No, I'm in a menopausal age. I'm not menopausal, I have a 28 day cycle, but I'm still in that age. And the cells wanna degradate and they wanna degenerate. And they have, and I have inflammation, but I, I counterbalance everything because I'm willing. You won't hear me say, I, mean, I don't wanna do that, I don't wanna eat that, I don't like liver. You'll never hear me say that. I'm like, whatever I need to do, let's do it, let's go. Let's go. Let's see that she was in her late 30s. Late 30s, child. Women don't look like this in their late 30s. <laughs> My ego is so bad. I'm like, I see women in the late 30s all the time and the aging process is starting, right? So, um, okay guys, it's time for stuff to go. Thank you. We got over 100 likes and uh, I really appreciate that. That's always the goal. I always try to get at least over 100. The sun's going down and so I'm gonna connect now to the circadian rhythm. When rotating food, so pick two meats and then rotate them. Yeah, you can rotate them every three days, yes. Four. All right guys, maybe 20. No, I would say not late 30s because when I don't, you know, when I'm, I mean, look, Look at the way I'm dressed, really? Come on now. Come on, per skater. So when I, when I don't talk and people don't hear my experience, they peg me to be around 34, not 38. Come on now. Give, give, give the girl some cred for working hard. All right, guys, so thank you so much for joining this chat. I appreciate it. Sun's going down and that means it's time for me to go. I did a 52 minute stream, so I always try to keep it 30. I went over 30 to almost an hour. Uh, I will upload a video tomorrow that is not gonna be a live stream. I'm going to be doing less live streams so I can get my book completely finished and photographed because I'm writing a book. And I have the keto course, stephanieperson.com, consultation, stephanieperson.com. And I have a Instagram, which is Stephanie Ketogenic, and a Facebook page, which is Stephanie the Business Person. And I'm out. Thank you, Deborah, so much for being my mod, and, and I saw a lot of deleted comments, so the trolls are coming in fast. Um, when I have Deborah, I obviously don't have to engage with trolls, so in the beginning, when I started live streaming, I did engage with them, and it's because it's, you know, my brain hasn't evolved to that, like, it's a troll, like, let it go. So thank you, Deborah. Let's see here. Okay, thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Yes, fabulous stream today, y'all. Fabulous, appreciate it. And it is time for me to not relax because I never do. I will be working as soon as the stream finishes. And yeah, so thank you everyone. Have a wonderful life and I'm out.